in the American urban consciousness, uh, it ranges from you know, our understanding of New York as the great financial and commercial capital of the world, to Los Angeles, the entertainment capital, to Detroit, the capital of ruins and deindustrialization and decline. Uh, Philadelphia has always played, has all of the elements of all of those places, but has its own distinctive aura, a strangeness, um, an idiosyncrasy ab about its urban form, and a particular history that's critical to understanding the way America as a nation developed, but also that stands apart from the rest of the nation. And part of the reason for writing this book was to, to lead readers through that history, to help them sift through the layers of urban American form to understand how and why Philadelphia is different from the rest of American cities and how it can be understood as the hidden city. Our criteria for including something in the book in an ideal world, they would be completely hidden, and, and some of the sites were that way. Um, uh, on the cover is a, a sewer tunnel, the Mill Creek uh, sewer that runs through West Philadelphia. Unless you work for the water department, you've probably never been down there. That's about as hidden as it gets. Uh, other other uh, sites were what we like to call hidden in plain sight. Uh, the Royal Theater is on 15th and South. It's not very far from City Hall. Uh, it's even got a mural of the theater on the outside of it. But few people would guess that on the inside, uh, there's some beautiful decoration that's still intact, but much of it um, has decayed and, and, in fact, has been demolished since we, since we photographed the book. We gained access in a variety of ways. We well, a lot of the time it was a simple phone call or email. Uh, other times it was uh, really putting in a lot of work. One of the main sites that we looked at in the book was the Metropolitan Opera House. Um, that's on North Broad Street. It's uh, just a, a massive uh, theater building that is currently being renovated. But when we photographed it for the 2009 Hidden City Festival, uh, the founder of Hidden City, Thaddeus Squire, actually went to, I think he said, at least a half dozen church services because a, a church had moved into that building in order to establish a rapport and a relationship with the congregation, with the minister there. Uh, and that was necessary to gain permission to uh, go in and photograph at that time. There's all different kinds of strata that we sift through in this book to discover the Hidden City. Some of it is physical, looking for markers that tell us what was there, uh, or why it was there, or who built it, um, or what its elements were for and how it worked. But others are invisible. So there are structures that form the way Philadelphia is as a different kind of place from the rest of urban America. That would be um, the reason that we, ha that we are a city of row houses. The way housing was financed in the city led to a different form. Um, the way that a subway system was never built, ultimately, for political and financial reasons. That led to a, a different kind of city form. Uh, the way that um, racist laws were in place, and this is uh, consistent around the country, but that's an invisible layer of the city that informs the way it gets built. And so we sifted through physical layers, but also what we would call metaphysical layers. And the collision of those two things is what makes Philadelphia the way it is. I think at the most basic level, people have to know, they have to be made aware that these types of places exist. So uh, the very first thing it does is expand people's understanding of, of what is there, what, what um, exists in the city. Uh, and once they know that, they can then, you know, basically keep their eyes open and, and be able to see it. And in some cases, it's as simple as looking in a window or looking up and, and seeing a, an older part of the building, whereas the first floor has um, been remodeled and there's a different facade there. So, um, for example, John Grass wood turning, uh, a wood turning shop that dated back to the 1880s, it's in Old City, which is a neighborhood everyone knows. Uh, that company was in business until 10 years ago. And all you had to do to find it was look in the window. 
It's the side window, not the front window, but still. Uh, so getting folks to be able to think in those terms is one of the things we're trying to do with the book.